Jeff Bezos and Amazon have just signed their largest commercial launch deal ever. They purchased up to 83 launches from United Launch Alliance, Ariane Space, and Blue Origin to deploy most of their 3,236 satellite Project Kuiper broadband mega constellation. They basically hired everyone and their second uncle twice removed on their mother's side, except SpaceX. $10 billion to increase the competition for SpaceX, which is pretty crazy. Furthermore, all rockets on the list have yet to fly. I'm not sure how Amazon benefits from committing to more expensive per launch unproven vehicles, but if cost, cadence, and assuredness are sacrificed, what is there to be gained? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Amazon announced on Tuesday that it has finalized agreements with three different rocket companies, including 18 launches of Europe's new Ariane Space's Ariane 6 rocket, 12 launches from Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket with options for 15 additional launches, and 38 launches of ULA's Vulcan rocket. A total of these 83 launches will deploy a majority of Amazon's low Earth orbit constellation of broadband satellites. Additionally, Amazon previously announced that it has purchased the final nine Atlas V rocket launches from ULA before that vehicle, which is powered by Russian engines, is retired. With this deal, Amazon has acquired an extraordinary amount of medium and heavy lift launch capacity over the next five years, procuring launches from every major Western provider except for its direct satellite competitor, SpaceX. Aside from SpaceX, this purchase represents the vast majority of any spare launch capacity for larger rockets in the United States or Europe over the next half decade. Amazon plans to launch two prototype satellites in the fourth quarter of 2022, but the company has not set a date for when deployment of its operational constellation will begin, but a spokesperson said that it will be shared after the demonstration mission later this year. And according to Dave Limp, Amazon's Senior Vice President for Devices and Services, these launch agreements reflect our incredible commitment and belief in Project Kuiper, and we're proud to be working with such an impressive lineup of partners to deliver on our mission. This is a hugely consequential deal with myriad implications for the space industry. While Amazon officials would not talk about costs, Amazon is likely paying at least $10 billion for these launches. That is a giant pot of money for the commercial launch industry. But the question is, why is Bezos and Amazon launching on imaginary rockets with expensive costs instead of the world's most cost-effective and available launch provider, SpaceX? Hi, and welcome back to Great SpaceX. You know, I really enjoy reading your comments. It means a lot to us and it's really helping us grow. Thank you so much. In building out its Project Kuiper constellation, Amazon is going head to head with SpaceX and its Starlink constellation. Based on timing of its first launches, Amazon is running about four years behind SpaceX. Amazon is also behind SpaceX because it does not have its own rocket, and no one in the industry can compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9 on price or launch cadence. The Falcon 9 rocket could launch as many as 60 times this year, and because SpaceX can reuse the first stage and payload fairing, the internal cost per launch is probably substantially less than $30 million. Amazon is likely paying, on average, at least three times as much per launch. Whether if it was Amazon who simply chose to avoid SpaceX, or if SpaceX said thanks but no thanks is still unclear. But the former seems more likely, as SpaceX is working with another satellite competitor, OneWeb, so the possibility of them refusing is not that high. Either way, by using other providers, Amazon is assuming some risk. None of the three rockets that Amazon has chosen has proven itself in flight. Both the Ariane 6 and Vulcan rockets are probably about plus or minus 12 months away from making their debut flights, while New Glenn is probably at least two years from its first flight. Amazon is asking a whole lot from these rockets. The company wants them to reach a high flight cadence during the mid-2020s in order to complete both their existing manifests as well as the additional Project Kuiper missions. For example, the Ariane 6 rocket was planned for 6 to 9 launches a year, but with the Soyuz vehicle off the market for European satellites, it will now carry additional demand. How quickly will the Ariane 6 be able to accommodate 3 or more annual missions from Amazon? 
At the same time, this is a huge shot in the arm to SpaceX's primary Western launch competitors. The Falcon 9 rocket had already peeled away a substantial number of commercial launches from Ariane Space and dozens of military and NASA launches from United Launch Alliance. Now, Jeff Bezos has showered these launch providers with cash as they scramble to compete with Elon Musk. It'll be fun to see which of these companies can execute on their new rockets in the coming years and quickly reach a high flight cadence. But if you ask me, the safe bet is that not all three will make it. And obviously, Bezos is also betting big on BE-4. Not only for New Glenn, but Blue Origin is also building the BE-4 engine to power the Vulcan rocket, if you didn't know already. That means that 78% of the launches Amazon is buying will fly on Blue Origin engines. That definitely is not a small number of engines to build. What's more, Blue Origin has yet to produce a flight-ready BE-4 rocket engine, and although the company will probably deliver the first two to ULA later this summer, no one is sure that everything will work out on time. Especially given that their FCC approval requires Kuiper to launch and operate 50% of its satellites no later than July 30th of 2026, and Kuiper must launch the remaining space stations necessary to complete its authorized service constellation, place them in their assigned orbits, and operate each of them in accordance with the authorization no later than July 30th of 2029. You hear that? That's the sound of the clock ticking there, Jeff. And what's the over-under on launches with BE-4 until mid-2026? This is just what happens when you commit to so many pipe dreams. But I guess it wouldn't have happened if their owner's name didn't start with a B and end it in Azos. Tuesday's announcement was also a piece of bad news for small launch providers. Previously, Amazon announced a multi-launch deal with ABL Space, which is developing the small RS-1 rocket for its Project Kuiper satellites. However, any additional deals with small launch companies were noticeably absent from Tuesday's blockbuster announcement. The problem is that, as small launch companies have gone public through special purpose acquisition companies, they have sold investors on playing a role in Mega Constellations. However, all Starlink satellites are launching on the Falcon 9 rocket. OneWeb so far has flown the vast majority of its satellites on Soyuz rockets and will soon switch to the Falcon 9. And the last major Western Mega Constellation, Project Kuiper, seems to have indicated a clear preference for larger rockets. This was truly not good news for the small launch companies, and I feel sorry for Rocket Lab. If they'd been another year or two ahead with Neutron, they probably would have been on the list as well. Finally, this launch deal also means that Amazon's satellite constellation is definitely coming. Amazon will compete with Starlink, OneWeb, and potentially others for broadband customers. And the deal means thousands more satellites in the sky, more cluttered orbits, and more potential for debris. All in all, setting common rules in GEO is now more necessary than ever. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have any advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. That's all for today, but we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks again for tuning in, and have a great day.